Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys how to wash the dog or how we do it here in the process that we do. Uh, the first thing I like to do is I take a cotton ball, I break it in half and I put it inside their ears so I don't have to worry about water getting in there so much as kind of a buffer between the water and the ear, hopefully to reduce some ear infections and all that kind of stuff. So just gently place the cotton ball in there, not shoving it in there very hard, but you definitely have to push it in there a little ways. So as soon as they shake their head, they don't fly right back out again. So that being said, you still wanna be careful when you wash their head, not directly get the water in their ear, but it kind of just helps. So um, I start off with my shampoos. I have a tear-free shampoo that I'm gonna use on her face. And then I have a different one I'm gonna use on her body. If you guys only have a, sh a choice of getting one shampoo, I definitely get like a gentle tear-free one. Then you can just use it all over the entire body and not have to worry about it. Um, I do dilute ours. Ours is a 50 to one dilution rate. So I put about two pumps or two like um, quarter size amount of shampoo inside a water bottle, fill the rest with warm water and then shake it up. So you can just use a normal water bottle from home or any sort of container you can to mix your shampoos with to dilute it. You don't have to dilute them, but it does make it suds easier and then the rinsing process is a lot easier as well. So uh, make certain your water is warm. Now I'll wait for it to warm up just a little bit. And then when you go to wash their face, I'd like to kind of tilt their head down. So I'm not gonna tilt the water directly inside their nose. So, get that. And then I kind of use my hand here to protect their eyes and also this shields their nose from the water going directly into it. Get everything nice and wet. And we like to do two washes here. So the first wash, rinse it, second wash, and then rinse it extremely well. We find that this just gets a really clean finish on the dog. Uh, lasts a bit longer and then any little bit you might have missed on your first wash you definitely catch on your second. So getting her nice and sudsy all over and not nice and wet. So then the biggest thing too is you want to make certain this is when you get their eye boogers all cleaned out. So I'm going to let those kind of soak a little bit. Um, you can use your, I use my fingernails a lot of times and just make certain I scrape all that off of there. You can also get a small comb or like a flea comb and very gently being certain you know exactly where the eye is at. You can take your comb and comb that forward to make certain you get all that eye gooby out of there. So definitely getting the eye goobers a little wet and letting them soak a little bit makes this a lot more pleasant experience for the dog to get the eye goobies off. Um, and when they're all hardened on there and you go to pick them off, sometimes you can do little raw spots or scabs. So um, that's what I suggest to do. You can also use the comb if your dog gets what we like to call dingleberries. So you can definitely, this is an easier way to do it without using your fingers or your fingernails, is you can take your comb after the butt's been wet and just kind of gently brush it and free it of any of those dingleberries that none of us like. So, good job. Okay, now I'm gonna start soaping up the head. Again, I'm gonna use the same kind of technique I use when I'm uh, first getting it wet, is I'm gonna tilt her face down and tilt the eyes down. So I'm not putting the shampoo directly in her eyes, aiming it downwards. I'm gonna get it nice and sudsy. And then I'm gonna rub it in there. And this is like when we do our little massage and stuff for you guys when we're washing the dogs in here. I'm scrubbing those eye corners really good, but being very careful where the eyes are at. So everyone does comment about the massage and how much their dog likes it. So this is when we do that and kind of feel for any lumps, bumps, uh, scabs, sometimes we find stitches that have been in there for a long time. Uh, this is when we tend to find things like that, um, is during this process of getting them all suds down and rubbed down with the shampoo. So getting really clean behind the ears, around the face. Again, this is a tear-free shampoo, so I don't have to worry about it burning her eyes. I'm still aware. I'm not gonna put it directly in her eyes, but um, I don't have to worry about it harming her. So getting her mouth nice and scrubbed up. Um, this area on the mouth is called the flu. Sometimes that holds food. Get that all scrubbed up. Make certain you get the ears clean. Again, I got the cotton balls in there. So now I know I can really get those nice and scrubbed up. Rub those down. And then I like to let that soak while I do the first wash on her body. So that's gonna soak. I'm gonna use my other shampoo again. If you had the choice between just one, use your tear-free one. You're okay, babe. Good girl. So just gonna get her body just like I did her head, all nice and sudsy. You're okay, baby. You're okay. Is that pulling on you a little bit? There you go, sis. Good girl. All the way down to her toes, massage it in there, get her belly. You wanna be starting to clean her back end really good. 
make that smell nice, get between her back legs. And I just like to get a nice little rub in there, make certain that they, we call them little suds monsters. So get on their pads, turn her around. Good girl. Do this side. And she is a very tolerant, very patient dog. So she is, uh, not everyone's dog is me this good about getting a bath, but she is very, very good about it. So get her all nice and sudsy on this side. Again, making certain I get under the tail really clean. All right. So this is when I'm gonna do my first rinse. Again, tilting the head down to protect the nose and the eyes. The first rinse that we do, we don't necessarily rinse them 100%, just because we're gonna sub them right back up again. Um, if you're only planning on doing one really good wash, you do wanna make certain they're 100% rinsed, or that's gonna cause them itching problems and uh, dander and all that kind of stuff. So, just gonna get her most of the way rinsed off for this one. This is what we do the rinse and repeat. <laughs> so here we go again with the head. You'll notice if you do two wash, the second wash takes like half the amount of shampoo uh, just because they're already clean from that first wash. So um, it is always amazing how much less shampoo the second wash takes. So you'll notice how much quicker she suds up. Good girl. Good girl. And again, we're gonna do the body. And we don't tend to do like a cream rinse or anything like that. It tends to make the coat too soft um, and too hard to cut. And then it tends to leave a film on them. So um, it's your choice if you want to do like a conditioner. Um, we, don't, we, just, we don't do it. Our shampoos are already very moisturizing. Um, so we haven't felt the need to do any sort of cream rinse or conditioner rinse on them at the end. So sorry, she's just doing that. She got a little, probably a little bit of water. So. Okay, sis. I might be the noose too, but all right, that one ran out of shampoo, so using a little bit of my face shampoo on her. So again, it's getting her nice and sudsy. Getting all those nooks and crannies. Across this. You're such a good girl. All right, so this will be the final rinse. So this is where you want to make certain you rinse extremely well. So I'm going to start with the head. That down. Girl. Want to make certain you kind of rub around the ears, get anything out from in front of them, behind them. Again, being careful not to get that water directly in the ear canal. Makes in the eyes are rinsed, mouth is rinsed. Okay, okay. So you want that water not to be sudsy anymore. So this is what really helps diluting your shampoo. It does make the rinsing process a lot quicker, a lot easier. And it makes your shampoo last a lot longer, which is nice, because shampoo can be very expensive for nice quality shampoo. So. I will, on smaller dogs, to rinse their bellies, I will lift them up. Make certain I get that really good. I see. I'm kind of like squeezing and uh, squeezing a little bit as I rinse just to kind of help get that shampoo out of there all the way. One, and once I feel like I have her rinse, I just kind of go over her a little bit more. Just don't want to risk leaving any of that shampoo, even though all of our shampoos are organic and really easy on them. 
it still can be irritating to the skin to get that left in there. So. All right, once I feel like I have that all rinsed, I am going to, I like to kind of gently squeeze the water off of them just to kind of help with the drying process. So very gently, I'm gonna kind of go through, squeeze the legs a little bit, rub my hand along the belly, kind of wring that out. Bring out the tail. Also, you want to remember to check, get those cotton balls out of those ears so you don't leave those in there. You'll notice they are a little damp, so it did save the water from going in. So they're dry on that side, damp on that side, so that's good. They did their job. Good girl. And then you can kind of check her over, like this is how you're going to check to see if your shampoo's rinsed out at all. Should look like normal hair. If you see anything that looks bubbly or sudsy, you need to rinse a little bit more, but she feels, I can feel on her. She's nice and squeaky clean feeling. So then I'm gonna take my towel. This is where a lot of people can cause some matting when they wash their dogs at home. Is a lot of people, when they get them, they wanna rub, 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 rub up and down really fast. Um, that causes friction and cause matting on the dog. So we just, we um, suggest blotting when you do the dog. So kind of the same thing I was doing with my hands. I'm gonna take the towel and just kind of more, I'm squeezing it more than I'm rubbing. So I'm just squeezing her dry, blotting her dry. I would try to stay away from the rubbing motion. Like I said, that's just gonna cause mats on the dog and give you more uh, work when she's all dry. So squeeze everywhere. Perfect. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. 